Is India will cross over the threshold of scientific achievement by making a trip to the dark side of the moon. With this mission, India will enter another elite space club. The 20-hour countdown began on Sunday evening. The launch is set to take place at the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota in the southern Indian state of Andhra Pradesh at 2.43 p.m. India time today. The chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, said that technical snags that developed in the launch's first attempt have not been corrected. Remember, Chandrayaan 2 was originally scheduled to launch uh, on the 15th of July. However, that mission was aborted after a technical snag was detected. The project will explore the south pole of the moon, a region where no other nation has been able to reach. The mission will study the lunar surface and will also continue its predecessor, Chandrayaan 1's search for water on the moon. Notably, Chandrayaan 2 will also make India the fourth country after the US, Russia and China to carry out a soft landing on the moon. Now we have NP Prasad Space entrepreneur joining us live from Berlin. On this momentous occasion, Mr. Masar, thank you so much for taking time out of with us here on We On World Is One. Uh, you know, it, the ISRO has been adding a feather to its cap. It's been uh, it capped off a phenomenal year last year. And this uh, particular one is capping off, uh, so to speak, a decade of achievements of ISRO. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, this is uh, the first time that uh, India is going to be, uh, you know, landing a rover and a lander on an uh, interplanetary mission. So this is indeed uh, a unique feat. Right. And uh, talk to us in terms of, uh, you know, we're also celebrating the, the, the 50th anniversary of the first ever uh, moon landing uh, at the same time. Uh, you know, and you had one of those men who set foot uh, on the moon for the first time. Talk about how uh, not much has been achieved in space ever since that moon landing. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the 60s was, of course, uh, the Cold War era, and uh, the two major powers then, the U.S. and the USSR, were in direct conflict, and space was a big arena of that conflict. And uh, after that conflict, you know, died down, there has been uh, not much of interest of going back to the, to the moon with at least humans. But uh, over the last uh, 10 or 15 years, uh, the Chinese have uh, picked up the mantle and uh, they have sent uh, four different missions to the moon, uh, to the surface. And, um, and now, you know, the, the lunar race is back on track also because of uh, private interest as well. You can see the likes of uh, Elon Musk and uh, Jeff Bezos talking about going to the moon uh, with their own launch vehicles and their landers. And, uh, and recently, there's been a host of other private companies in the U.S. supported by NASA who are looking at, uh, you know, in situ resource utilization and doing uh, a large number of operations on the surface of the moon. Right. Uh, in that sense, uh, what India did with uh, Chandrayaan-1 many, many years ago was phenomenal. You know, and this is a follow-up to that. And in that sense, uh, India has really pushed the envelope uh, in the last decade in terms of moon exploration, to be specific. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, given that the uh, Indian progress is kind of in, in leapfrogging in formats because, uh, you know, for the first mission to the moon by India was only the orbiter, but the second mission is already, you know, challenging in a sense that they're, they're moving away from just the orbiter to then fly a lander and a rover. And, uh, of course, you know, the, I'm hoping that the next mission, maybe the Chandrayaan-3, will uh, evol evolve to have uh, more surface-level operations with a longer duration of time, maybe three to six months of surface, surface operations instead of just uh, one week. And uh, in terms of, you know, how this will be beneficial to, you know, human society uh, from here on, because those questions were raised when the first uh, moon landing was attempted. Uh, uh, you know, it was uh, detailed very well in that uh, film that was made on the first moon landing, first man. Uh, you know, talk to us, you know, today in 2019, when there was a moon landing, what does it mean for human society? 
Yeah, so what happens in uh, in such investments uh, by the government in science and technology, and especially ISRO, is that ISRO in the process has established technologies to have electronics survive in such uh, deep space environments through radiation belts, uh, through extreme thermal environments, and it has also achieved a lot of autonomy in terms of operations. So imagine this rover is on the moon uh, 300,000 kilometers away, and it is autonomous and it's working, and in extreme environments. So which means that the technology that is established in the process can directly be used in other extreme environments like nuclear facilities if there's a you know requirement there in defense uh, related operations in uh, marine industries uh, in energy industry so in health industry so essentially there is a lot of spin off benefits that will come uh, but the question is you know there's a timeline because uh, the technology is now established and for it to tr trickle down into some of these sectors it will take its time but that's where you know the investments are needed right uh... Mr. Prasad, uh, please uh, stay with us. Uh, the moon is the nearest celestial body from Earth, but uh, that does not make the journey from Earth to moon any easier. Consider this. The average distance from the Earth to the moon is about 3.8 lakh kilometers. But the journey is not as simple as taking off on the Earth and landing on the moon. Firstly, the GSLV Mark III launch vehicle, which is India's heavy lift satellite launch vehicle is used. The trajectory of the satellite is influenced by the non-uniform gravity of the Earth, the Moon and other celestial bodies. And getting the trajectory right is everything. The next big challenge is the deep space communication between ISRO and Chandrayaan-2. Due to the distance, limited onboard power, radio signals will be weak with heavy background noise. In its trajectory from the Earth to the Moon, the rocket will have to change its route from the Earth's orbit to that of the Moon's. And as Moon's position changes continually due to its orbital motion, complex beforehand calculations will have to be made. And by firing onboard motors, Chandrayaan-2 will have to be raised to the vicinity of the Moon's orbit. Even falling into the Moon's orbit is a challenge. Lunar gravity is lumpy owing to Moon's uneven mass distribution under its surface. Once Chandrayaan-2 is safely in the Moon's orbit, one of the biggest challenges of the entire mission comes to the fore, soft landing. And this process is divided into two stages, rough breaking and fine breaking. The Moon dust is another big challenge. The Moon's surface is covered with the craters, rock and dust. Moon dust could stick to the sensors, solar panels, etc. and could disrupt the performance of the rover. And lastly, the temperature variations in, on the moon and the hard vacuum on the lunar surface make it an extremely hard and difficult environment for the lander and the rover to function. Mr. N.P. Prasad, uh, it is uh, such a complex task, isn't it? But it was accomplished 50 years ago. It is being accomplished again. What do you think has changed uh, uh, in that sense uh, in terms of both of these big accomplishments? Yeah, so with uh, 50 years ago, the place that uh, the astronauts uh, landed from the U.S. is uh, far different from where ISRO is attempting to go, uh, in, a, in a sense that the region where ISRO is attempting to go with its uh, rover has never been done by any other country. So it is closer to the poles, so the environment is much more extreme. And, uh, you know, that is where the future is because uh, according to the latest research, uh, the evidence of water being present on the moon is uh, mostly concentrated around uh, the poles. So therefore, you know, this becomes a huge uh, step for India to be able to go to the place where these kind of resources can, can be exploited in the future. Oh, absolutely. And uh, what do you think it makes for the... For, for private uh, space exploration in India because that is a space that the government has been uh, wanting to, uh, to expand and been wanting it to, 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 to sort of uh, multiply manifold. Yeah, absolutely. So the three or four areas that uh, the government has really expanded its uh, space capabilities are interplanetary missions, you know, defense requirements in space, 
uh, and of course the human space flight mission with all of these new areas that are upcoming uh, the usual traditional applications that isro has been doing um, it needs to have the same amount of traction if uh, if all the others areas have to also be served and that's where i think is the opportunity for the private industry so if uh, the usual routine uh, satellites uh, like the imaging satellites and the communication satellites are then offloaded to the industry it will allow isro to focus on developing core technologies that are needed for these kinds of interplanetary and human space flight uh, missions and uh, that's where i see the future right uh, np prasad uh, joining us live from berlin in germany on this moment is occasion please stay with us uh, we also have our correspondent uh, siddharth uh, joining us uh, live uh, from uh, shri harikota with the latest uh, on india's ambitious uh, moon mission chandrayaan to siddharth talk to us uh, we're less than 2 hours away uh, just about 2 uh, hours away in fact uh, from uh, the take off Yes indeed we've reached those anxious and crucial 2 hours because it was in these 2 hours that the final stage of the rocket that is the third stage where the cryogenic engine is located so the cryogenic engine basically uses frozen liquid fuels so it's liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen that this very sophisticated engine uses to power the final stage of the rocket to take the chandrayaan 2 module into the earth parking orbit so isro has just tweeted that the fuel filling is underway uh, that is liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen are being filled in the topmost stage of the rocket it's important to note that last time the rocket was to be launched that is on the 15th of uh, this month that was where uh, the error occurred that in the final stage that was where a leak was detected and the launch had to be called off so obviously these are anxious moments but isro seems very confident because the chairman himself had said that the leak has been plugged and we are going on with the mission and even when they rehearsed this mission last night it was all uh, as on paper it was supposed to be a textbook launch. and that's what the rehearsal also indicated last night supposed to be a textbook launch uh, that's what uh, the uh, the the results were last night uh, uh, but uh, you know the last time uh, you know there's the, there was a technical glitch and in fact uh, isro chief uh, at today specifically mentioned about how those technical glitches with the first uh, uh, launch attempt have been completely fixed uh, uh, you know what is the vibe you're getting there uh, from the launch space uh, today uh, because it's not very often that the first attempt doesn't go well and then you have a second attempt Well uh, space science and aerospace engineering are very unforgiving fields so it's important to understand that it's better to be uh, safe than sorry because in a 1000 crore mission isro uh, as they said in their tweet right after that launch being called off was taking abundant precaution to use the exact same words because there are some quarters that believe that that launch on the 15th could have gone ahead uh, despite that error but isro did not want to take a single chance because this is the blood and sweat of so many of our scientists so many of our students so many of you universities and also so many industry partners that has gone into this uh, mission that chandrayaan 2 is so obviously isro was just making sure that they are taking no chances and this is completely acceptable because even when we look at some of the apollo missions that the americans flew the first apollo was a tragic mission and it ended up in a failure where three people three astronauts lost their lives but the subsequent apollos were successful so space science being so unforgiving and uh, it has to be you know nil error so only then can a mission succeed so it's important that the agency does all that they can to ensure that it goes as per plan and as per pinpoint accuracy so that i'm glad uh, you reminded us all about that very important point as we come down to india's uh, ambitious uh, moon mission chandrayaan 2 thank you siddharth mp there uh, joining us uh, live uh, uh, straight uh, from the launch uh, uh, center in uh, shri harikota and of course uh, our special guest np prasad joining us live straight from berlin thank you uh, mr prasad for being with us here on we on world is one